Hi, in previous tutorials, I demonstrated how we can solve the advection diffusion equation in complex geometries. In this tutorial, I'll talk about how we can solve more complex forms of convective transport equations that are more relevant to specific biochemicals. So the presentation will follow uh, our work led by my student, uh, Mosefa. So in this paper, we solved various forms of biochemical transport in coronary arteries. Specifically, we looked at uh, uh, biotransport in low density lipoprotein, nit nitric oxide, oxygen, and monocytes. So in this uh, GitHub directory here, which my student Mostafa created, um, we uh, provide these uh, codes for this paper. And um, today I will go over one of these codes as an example, but you're welcome to look at the other codes as well. So I will follow the nitric oxide example here. So this is the code that I'll follow. So uh, uh, so the code is a lot of it is similar to the previous codes that I talked about with some differences that I want to highlight here that allows us to solve these more complex equations. So if you look at this uh, nitric oxide problem, it's again an advection diffusion equation, but it has a reaction term. So this term here is a reaction term, which represents the degradation and half-life of nitric oxide. And then the flux boundary condition is unlike the previous tutorials we talked about, is not constant, but it's heterogeneous and dependent on wall shear stress. So it's and so that essentially the, you can think of the endothelial cells are, you know, they can sense wall shear stress here, and the flux depends on the magnitude in wall shear stress. Okay, so uh, yeah, we so if I go over here, here we're setting the directories. We can read the mesh. Um, and here I'm showing you an example where, if you remember in the earlier tutorials, I talked about how in certain cases it helps if you define multiple subdomains and outside the region of interest, increase the diffusion coefficient. Um, so we damp these concentration patterns uh, in those regions, especially downstream of the region of interest. So to help with the challenges associated near the outside boundary condition. So here we define those subdomains here. Um, and then here we just specify the wall shear stress data to be read. And um, um, so here we can set the, the, the parameters. We have the diffusion coefficients. We have the high diffusion coefficient that we set near the outlets. And here we define the subdomains. So here's an example of how you can use subdomains to set different parameters in different regions of your mesh. Okay, so uh, here we're setting the parameters specific to nitric oxide transport. Uh, we are defining the functions, the trial test functions. Here are the boundary conditions that we have. Um, and we can group all these boundary conditions. Here we have multiple outlets. So you can see we have more boundary conditions. And here in this example, unlike the previous example, which we used uh, the, the crank Nicholson approach for uh, time integration, here we're using the generalized alpha me methods. As I mentioned, it, uh, the generalized alpha method is more stable uh, for time integration. Uh, so if you run into challenges with the technical and time integration approach, you can use generalized alpha. And um, here we go to the main time, time integration loop. And uh, if I show you the weak form here, and you're welcome to look at this code to see how the generalized alpha is method is uh, implemented. But specifically, if you want to look at the weak form, here's the weak form that we have. So it's similar to what we had before, but we have this additional reaction term added here. And here's the flux boundary condition, which again is applied to the wall. But um, the uh, the flux, we have, uh, uh, you know, in this parameter, R and O, we can define it to be a function of wall schuss magnitude, which we're reading here. So we can create a wall schuss dependent flux boundary condition here, okay? And the rest is just time integration using JS alpha. Um, so, uh, so you're welcome to check out the other directories here. So in our paper here, we uh, uh, talk about different forms of mass transport, so you can, you know, we have ATP transport, you can see it's a little bit more complicated as flux boundary condition, or oxygen transport, which is a similar equation to what we talked earlier, but it has uh, different forms of boundary conditions. And um, uh, and we talked about specifically in this paper, how these uh, concentration patterns relate to 
uh, Walsh stress patterns and also how it relates to mechanical transduction pathways that we know are also influenced by Walsh stress. Okay, thank you.